With the Easter holiday coming up, I wanted to put this video out to help people understand that Easter is not just a religious holiday. As a matter of fact, it has pretty significant and very deep spiritual meaning behind it more than religious. And so this video is really for anyone that celebrates Easter, but it is also for those that don't celebrate Easter because it is going to give you an understanding of that deeper, more nature-based message that this holiday offers. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the spiritual significance of Easter, the light beings that oversee this time of year and the message and support that they offer us if we are open to those messages. Hello, my name is Kata and I am a spiritual life coach and an energy healer and I make videos about spiritual topics and I help people to spiritually grow. I help people that are on the awakening journey that are looking to accelerate their journey and that are just looking for guidance and support during their journey because spiritual awakening I know can be very tough. It is not an easy thing to transform oneself. And so I put these videos out to help people understand what they're moving through and how to move through it with more ease, more grace. If you would like to book a session with me, check out the description box below. You will find all of my details down there. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. So today I'd like to present a more spiritual perspective, as I said, about Easter rather than religious. I myself am not a religious person. I don't follow any specific religion. I am very spiritual, however, and spirituality, what that really means, for those of you that don't know, is spirituality is a really deep connection to actually nature and to the divine through nature. So it has nothing to do with religion and has everything to do with having a, a deeper awareness, a more conscious perspective about the natural world, the messages, the beings that live and exist here with us that are in the natural world that are constantly communicating with us. If we are receptive to their messages, if we're able to decipher their messages. So Easter is special of all of the holidays actually because it is the one holiday that is and i'll say holy day instead of holy holiday it is the one holy day that is determined by the stars meaning that it is determined by astrology and the moon plays a very significant role in easter because it is a, a, a holiday that falls on the first Sunday following the first full moon after the spring equinox. And that's always, always. So that's always determined by the full moon. During Easter, which is usually there's Good Friday, right? And then we have Easter Sunday, Easter Monday. But throughout this weekend of Easter, I'd like you to have a perspective more about nature and a connection to nature more than, like I said, the religious aspect of it. And of course, resurrection is associated with the holiday of Easter, uh, Jesus resurrecting out of his grave at this time. And so there is very deep symbolic meanings of resurrection here and a message for humanity about resurrection during the Easter holiday that needs to come into our awareness. So Easter is supervised by Archangel Raphael and I'm going to be talking about the angels here a little bit and about Archangels. He is the keeper of the Holy Grail and if you've seen any of the last few videos I've made, springtime is such a significant and special time that very deeply correlates and connects with the Holy Grail. Now the Holy Grail is of course a very personal spiritual quest to find God and to find holiness within yourself. That's what the quest for the Holy Grail is, is to find God and holiness within yourself. So there is an ideal opportunity during Easter to access high vibing energies, to transform our lives into something more beautiful and more elevated. 
So like I said, it's a very special weekend. Energetically, it's a very highly charged, very high vibrational weekend. It brings and carries a very deep message of hope and peace and love and unity. Archangel Raphael, who governs this holiday, who oversees this holy day, it is his task uh, this time of year to help open the senses so that the soul can truly see and know what an individual on the path of awakening must do. So Archangel Raphael guides us into this beautiful awareness to help us see what we need to be doing at this time to propel our lives forward. Now, what I would recommend, and this is something that I have done many on many occasions, is to do a water fast at some point during the Easter holiday, simply to cleanse, to detoxify, because the spring season symbolizes so much the need, the requirement for us to detoxify our physical vessel, to lighten our toxic load. And so water fasting for about 24 hours, maybe on the Friday, if that is doable for you and medically safe for you to do, then I would highly recommend doing that. It will serve you very well. It will help to cleanse, to make space within your body, within your energy field, because it also cleanses the energy field when we fast. So I would recommend doing that on the Friday. That way you can still have meals with family and friends on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, if you choose. So the celebration of Easter can help us in our upward spiral. It's a time of great angelic celebration when we can connect easier with the realm of angels and nature's messengers and get support to resurrect our own lives. So I'm going to ask the question here, what needs resurrecting in your life at this time? And what feels dead in your life right now? And whatever feels dead in your life at this time, can that be resurrected in any kind of way? Or do you need to let it fall away? Like, should it be resurrected is the question. Do you need to take some kind of action to clear out what is dead in your life or to resurrect something in your life? So what kind of action perhaps do you need to take is something to think about at this time. And just as a couple of examples here, like we're talking, when, I, when I'm saying something is dead in your life, I'm saying it uh, could be something like a dead end job, it could be a dead end relationship, or several dead end relationships that don't seem to go anywhere, or just don't support you, or don't feel good to be in any longer. It could be like a dead end business that maybe that you're running that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And with dead end, I'm also meaning here like, something that you've lost all passion for and have no desire to continue with. That's what dead end means. So really think about what in your life at this time have you lost passion for that you are now ready to let go, that you are now ready to like maybe sweep out or clear out of your life or need to clear out of your life. And I ask this because this is a time when new teachers are often awakened to their tasks and their purpose. So springtime is a time when a lot of people kind of start realizing like, oh, you know, there's something that I'm maybe really good at, or there's something that I have information or wisdom that I could share with others. So is there anything that you've been wanting to teach or wanting to share with others? It's also a time when you can tap into the hidden meaning of music and flowers. So music and flowers very much connects with this holiday, with this tradition. Uh, as well. Is there any particular music or flowers that you're drawn to right now? Look up the spiritual meaning to receive a message or guidance that it is bringing to you at this time. So if there's any specific flower or any specific songs or type of music that you're particularly drawn to at this time, uh, kind of tap into that and just explore that a little bit. And when it comes to specific flowers, definitely look them up, look up spiritual meaning of tulips or sunflowers or whatever flowers you're really drawn to at this time, because it will be carrying a message for you. Some type of an awareness that it wants you to have, something that plant or that type of music is representing that it wants you to have awareness of. So pay attention to nature's messengers showing up for you at this time. This is very, very important. Like I said, this holiday very 
closely connects to uh, the spring season, of course, and to the natural world. What is the natural world doing in the spring season? It's coming back to life, right? So now let's talk about Archangel Raphael for a moment. He is the overseer of spring. So he is the angel, the archangel that is most associated with the season of spring. He is the angel of brightness, of beauty, healing, and life. Definitely very, uh, and I would say most connected to healing. His name literally means God has healed. He's a teacher of healing, especially through nature, and by helping people link the heart and the mind into coherence, so bringing balance back into the heart and the mind so that they're not functioning as two separate units, but rather as one coherent unit, where you're making decisions from the heart, where you're making your choices from the heart, and you're allowing your intuition and your heart to guide you when you are doing this rather than the mind. The caduceus is his symbol. That is the symbol that is most associated with Archangel uh, Raphael. And he first showed up in the Chaldean tradition. So that's in like Mesopotamia, so a long time ago, in uh, like Iraq region. That's where he was first documented. He is one of seven holy angels that attend the throne of God. He is the keeper and guardian of the Holy Grail, which was the most sacred symbol in the Piscean Age, as we know from King Arthur's story. And as we also know that the Piscean Age is what we are currently wrapping up, moving into the Aquarian Age or kind of in the Aquarian Age already. He helps to awaken the great quest within us. And this is why Archangel Raphael is associated with the Holy Grail, because he is the Archangel that awakens that hero's journey within. So the quest for our true spiritual essence and how best to manifest it in this lifetime. That is what Archangel Raphael oversees and helps to support. So if you need assistance with getting onto your spiritual path, definitely connect and call upon Archangel Raphael to assist you with that. He is the chief bestower of valor and grace upon humanity, and he is the bringer of miracles. So again, the miracle of spring, because isn't it a miracle that spring, you know, how nature just naturally knows what to do, how nature just naturally comes back to life, that in itself is a miracle. Right? So Raphael is very closely related to and connected to miracles. And he brings these miracles to humanity with a group of light beings called the Malachim. When you decide to take more conscious control of your personal evolution, Archangel Raphael and his team, the Malachim, influence your personal holy guardian angel to teach and guide you through this process. So. In the angelic realms, there are hierarchies, and we have angels, archangels, right? And in those hierarchies, there are assistants, or there are groups of light beings who are supporting archangels. And then those groups are also supporting and directly communicating with our own personal guardian angels and discussing and, and figure out figuring out how to guide us on our own path to awakening. So it's pretty cool. There's like so much happening behind the scenes that I think people are not aware of, right? Because the unseen world is something that people disconnect from. If I can't see it, it's not there, is the mentality. But this is so not true, right? Because there are angels and we know that there are angels. We've seen there's video evidence of miracles happening, of even angels being recorded. So they are there, but they are very, very high frequency beings and our third density, our 3D world is very, very dense for them. So they don't naturally just pop out of nowhere. Like they don't just appear or they can't be physically seen because of that, but they are operating in other dimensions here with us in the third dimension where they can access our guardian angel who is more capable of existing within our third dimensional world, but even our guardian angel, of course, cannot be seen, right? So it's very, very interesting. 
So there is an angelic hierarchy of spring, and I want to talk about that a little bit right now. And I'm only going to talk about the angels of Aries because we are in Aries season at this time, but there are angels of Taurus and there are angels of Gemini. As a matter of fact, there are angels for every single month for every zodiac sign. Specific angels, groups of light beings that are connected to each season, that are connected to each month. Uh, that have specific tasks and specific roles that they play throughout that month and assist humanity to bring certain um, learning, certain wisdom, certain understanding about. So the beings of light assigned to the zodiac sign of Aries stimulate a call to the great overcoming. And this is the overcoming of your personality with your spirit. So the angels of Aries really support this and really want us to have the courage, to have the strength to overcome our personalities with our own spirit. The spirit is always stronger than the personality, but our personalities, because they're so, it can be so ego-based, can often override our spirit, right? How many times have you had an intuitive hit about something like to do something or not do something or not go somewhere and you didn't listen to that intuition that that was your ego overriding your spirit so if you struggle to have the discipline to overcome bad habits or to stick to a new healthy routine call upon the angels of aries to help you stay on track and because aries is the first sign of the zodiac it is the beginning of a new 12 month cycle it is very important to recognize that in Aries season is is action time. Aries is a fire sign, right? This is when we begin anew. This is when we cleanse our bodies and physical vessels after that last cycle. So this is a very important time for new beginnings personally within our spirits, within our hearts, but also within the physical body. Keep in mind that Spring is the season to do detoxing. This is a great time to start a new routine, uh, a new habit, like good habits to replace your bad habits with. This is also an excellent time to start like a new workout schedule if that's something that you've been wanting to do, right? This is about getting in shape, getting your body strong again, and basically preparing your physical vessel. Energies of self-sacrifice and transmutation are awakened within us by the angels of Aries. So those that are unaware or undeveloped spiritually, usually because there was no example for them in their life, those are the people I find are unfortunately quite unconscious people that were raised by very unconscious people. Uh, those people manifest only undirected experiences because they don't know how to recognize or interpret the signs and communication that they receive from the, from the divine. Now, those that are aware and more conscious of the signs and messages, those who are actively working on themselves get a boost of motivation in the Aries season to put even greater effort toward developing their personality. So people that are already on the spiritual path that are already doing, you know, shadow work and different things to, to basically shed old versions of themselves, those people get an extra boost at this time, particularly from these unseen supporters, angels of Aries. And there's a whole team out there that we don't even see. And unfortunately, because of that, so many people don't even acknowledge. So those that are conscious really get an opportunity at this time to harmonize with their spirit even more and to get like even deeper within themselves and even more connected to their intuition. And so this allows you actually to listen to your intuition even more. For the spiritually aware, these angelic beings awaken recognition of the divine plan for them. So this is when you may have like aha moments and throughout this Easter weekend, you might get like some light bulb moments where you're like, oh, wait a minute, I think I should try this or I think I should do that, right? Follow through on those intuitive hits because they're going to guide you somewhere very special. They will get strong signs and communications and guidance through nature. This is why it's so important for you to pay attention to what shows up. What are you noticing repeatedly? Are there any 
specific or certain birds or animals or bugs or insects or whatever. What in the natural world, or like I said before, flowers that you're specifically drawn to? What is it that you that is sort of on repeat that you keep noticing that is popping up? And, and flowers could even pop up like you see a sunflower on the side of a truck and then you go to the grocery store and all of a sudden sunflowers kind of stand out to you while you're standing in line and just kind of looking around. And you know what I mean? So it's like, it, it comes in very subtle ways, but it's just this repeated like, oh, I think I saw sunflowers like four times today. That's a sign. <laughs> That's a very clear indication that there's something that the sunflower or these angels these beautiful beings of spring are delivering a message to you through that sunflower. So you need to go and you need to look up what that spiritual meaning is for the sunflower so that you understand what it's trying to say to you. This is how these angels or these beings communicate with us because they can't verbally communicate with us. They will communicate through our dreams uh, sometimes, but in most cases they communicate through nature. They are nature angels or nature beings. These angels, and the signs they communicate through help us merge self-control with wisdom. And so there's a lot and actually like a big emphasis here on self-control and on really taking your power back when it comes to that spirit overriding the personality. So this is where we have to really use self-discipline to, to guide us to the next level. Without discipline, you're not going to get there, right? So depending on your level of consciousness, their energy may be experienced through one, instinctual reaction. This is where you intuitively feel you should or you shouldn't do something or go or not go somewhere. So this is strong intuition. Another way in which they communicate would be like a higher form of desire. So this is when you have a strong desire to do something, usually something that's like really good for you. So it's like you're getting this nudge, this this feeling like that you should really, and it's not even a feeling, it's a desire. It's like you want to do something different, something that you know that you probably should have done a while ago or started a while ago. And then number three is through direct will. This is where you suddenly have strong willpower to change something for the better in your life and you take action on it and you do it. So the will to take some form of action. So these three things that might be really popping up for you right now, so like pay attention to that. So strong intuition, deep desire, and the will to take some form of action. Pay attention in your life and see if any of that is resonating for you right now. So they literally tune you into the powerful energies of nature to stimulate new opportunities and growth within your life. This is why it's important to pay attention to signs. Personally, as a deeply spiritual person, everything in my opinion is a sign. Nothing happens by accident. Nothing is by uh, coincidence. Everything always happens for a reason. So trust the signs that you get. If and. Spirit animals too, by the way, they change on a pretty regular basis. So the other day I had cats, for example, literally just walked up to my back door and then another cat just crossed my yard. And I don't, that's not normal. That's not typical uh, for, for my area, but like cat was my spirit animal that day. And then on another day, it's the hawk. And then on another day, it's the red cardinal. So, and every time these animals show up for me, I always look them up. I look up the spiritual meaning and it, always always is like so spot on the the meaning behind it the spiritual meaning of these animals when i when i read through and sometimes i have to go through several different websites or read several different websites before i kind of resonate with the message that i find but it always always ends up resonating so it, it always fits perfectly into my life at that very moment so it's very very interesting pay attention to these signs guys over this easter weekend you know, Easter is just this, this emphasis on bunnies and chocolate <laughs> and really it, the emphasis should be on personal development and on resurrection and of cleansing and detoxifying and connecting to these beautiful nature beings, these angels who are 
so eager and so excited and happy to help us and to support us and they want nothing more than to help and support us and guide us all we have to do is tap into that energy to believe that they exist to know that they exist unequivocally know it and undoubtedly know it and just ask communicate with them talk to them ask them to guide you and they will they will it's, it's exactly what they do so pay attention to these feelings if they are emerging from you right now and tune into what they're guiding you to do really tune in over this easter weekend to the magic of nature and to the messages that it is offering you so that is my easter weekend message thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one wishing you and your family a very happy easter weekend stay blessed